What would make you wake up, go to your daughter's room, open up your laptop, write down impossible things, get in a borrowed 15 passenger van, drive over to a $54 million arena, take this picture, and tell everybody you will one day own it? Crazy face. What makes you get back into the 15 passenger van, go to your current situation, get on a platform in front of skeptical people and say and this? we're going to have to go to another place. Crazy faith. What would make you turn down $2 million? Give to other people when you were in need. Say you will have no debt and believe not just for a building, but for the entire block. Crazy faith. What would make you embrace the tears after the confirmed diagnosis? Acknowledge the lies and the fears, but still believe for the healing in your child. Crazy faith. What would make you stop waiting on the crowd to agree with what you know but they cannot see? Stop playing it safe on the boat. It's time for you to do the impossible and walk on the sea. You've got to see it before you see it. Yeah, maybe it might sound crazy, but baby, your purpose can't afford for you to be lazy. It's only crazy until it happens. Yeah, they think I'm crazy. Some may call me crazy. I'ma follow trends. I'm just doing what you made me to do. I'ma follow trends. I'm just doing what you made me to do. We are in week 12 of a series we're calling Crazier Faith. And I told y'all it's crazy till Christmas. We only got two more weeks and um, I just feel so strongly that part of my assignment, my life message is to move the body of Christ towards faith in God. Not just faith for an event or a thing, but faith in God. Say faith in God. Most people are more concerned about faith for a thing than faith in God. And today, as we get ready to um, do what is custom or customary or usual around Transformation Church, as we give um, our end of the year offering in crazy faith, this offering, a lot of people are like, what is it for? What is it for? What are we doing? What are we doing? I, I told somebody that um, I don't want our church to be built around giving four things. Because if there's no thing to give, we don't give four, we think that it's not necessary to give. I don't give for things. I give so that my heart that is wicked without God puts proper priority on why I'm blessed. Most people do not understand that giving and generosity is a fruit of what actually has the priority of your heart. And so for all of us as a church, we decided a few years back that there's always stuff God wants to do with our church. There's tons of initiatives, tons of outreach partners, tons of buildings we need to build, tons of stuff that we need to do, but we will not give at this time of year, especially Christmas time, where everything is about what you can get. Come on, let's be honest. All of us got an Amazon cart with wish lists already ready, just waiting for somebody to ask us what you want. Zing, right there. But at the season where we're talking about what, where the culture is talking about what we can get, yeah. as a church, we decided that we will focus on what we can give. Yeah. Yeah. And that's living and walking in. Everybody shouted me crazy faith. Crazy faith. <laughs> Say it like you mean it. Crazy faith. So um, today I feel responsible as some of us are making the biggest faith move we've ever made. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like. When it comes to giving resources, especially with some of the resources we have or don't have, it takes crazy faith. <laughs> some of y'all lost sleep. Uh, so, some of you have st started to try to figure out your second and third job to obey God. And some of us have done. I, I just want to be honest and authentic with you because I don't want to come up here. Everybody's just ready to give in crazy faith. No, 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 no. Some of us crying. 
on the way to the bucket. You thought it was the anointing. No, it hurts. But I feel like this may be the most significant move our church has made all year because we begin to do a cuss word to most of us, but one of the greatest successes you can have in the kingdom of God, we start to, everybody say, mature. Ooh. Ooh. Some of us have bought into the Toys R Us kid theme song. I don't want to grow up. I just want to be a kid. <laughs> like, like, that's how we live our Christian life. The Christian life is not lived in age and years served. There are 60 year olds that are being lapped up by 21 year olds in spiritual maturity because of one word, obedience. God tries to tell you to do something and your thing is I'm grown. I'm in your business. I, I shouldn't have to go back to that level. What, what kind of sense does that make? And God is telling us today as a church, it's time for us to mature. So I'm going to read a passage of scripture that may be familiar to you, but I want to use it as an anchor for us to figure out where we are in our faith today. Can we go on a journey today? I said, can we go on a journey today? Okay, Hebrews 11.6. It says, and without... What's the word? Faith. I'm going to read it again. I need you to help me. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And without faith, that word could have been anything right there. I wish you would have said like, and without small groups. And without worship music because we love those things and without faith it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him everybody say must believe believe. dang we can't get over having a lukewarm kind of halfway not really too committed faith he said you must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. We're in the 12th week of a series called Crazy Faith. Most people that have stayed in this with us this long, you believe that God exists at least. And then y'all believe that he rewards people who really go after God. But I really think we have not fully understood and grasped this scripture because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, people have used this scripture to beat people over the head and made people like, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You're not pleasing to God. What God is trying to say is like, faith is like bare minimum. Like, he's not saying it like, you are unpleasing to me because you do not have big faith. Like, remember, he says, all it takes is must see faith. I don't even need a lot of it. Like, He's just trying to give you the standard. Faith is the standard to actually being able to do this thing how I set it up. Intercourse is the standard to have children. Like, nobody would argue that there has to be two people coming together for there to be a wham. Everybody say standard. And so many times we cheer for the standard. Like to go through a door, you got to walk up to the door and open it. That's the standard of going through the door. The standard for not being funky. There's only so much cologne and perfume 
And when you're young, ax body spray, y'all. Some of y'all be shh, shh. Walmart, 678. <laughs> but if you're going to be clean, the standard is take a, just take a shower. This is what God is saying about faith. This ain't rocket scientists. If you want to please me, faith is a standard. So if faith is the standard, we got to figure out where we are in faith. Because I'm sitting in a room and thousands of people are listening to me. And everybody's at a different place in faith. We all just sang the same song. We all read in the same scripture, but we're in different lanes of faith. And today, I want to help you identify your lane of faith and then see if we can't, by the end of this, help you move to the next level or mature to the next lane of faith. Is that okay? Okay. So, so I'm going to call this um, example, I'm going to give you the lanes of crazy faith. Okay. Because I need us to, figure out where we are some people believe crazy faith is lucky i need to be honest because all the church people say mm. but the truth of the matter is go ahead and bring 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 that out right now is most people think oh my gosh they got that building oh they're so lucky wow whoa God blessed them with that job? What? Ah, they're so lucky. We, we may not say it like that, but we act like God is a slot machine. Picking who he's going to bless this week or not. Is it going to be the, is it going to be the, is it going to be, I mean, And I need you to know it's okay if you're there, but that ain't where you need to be. Because if you believe crazy faith is about luck, what you do is you use God and faith as an option of many. Okay, yeah, bring me my stuff. Yeah, yeah, just, 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 let, let me, let me show you this. What happens is, what happens is, if God is one option, we'll give him a little time and a little work. But I'm still going to believe in the horoscope and I'm still going to light my incense and get the vibe and the chakra and the energy right because I think it's luck, so I need to put myself in a lot of different things because I'm not sure what's going to actually work. And so I'm going to be a positive person and I'm going to give good vibes over here and I'm going to be able to manifest back here. And, and, and because I think it's about luck, I put pieces of my life everywhere. I put pieces of my life in my career. You know, if I just work hard and grind and hustle and prove it. And, and, and it's just like we put so much energy into these things, hoping that we'll get everybody say lucky. But crazy faith is not lucky. What we're believing for, why we're giving, why we serve, what we are doing is so that we can have not luck, but life. John 10, 10, we all know what it says, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. What these things are doing from you is stealing time, stealing energy, stealing focus, that you could be focusing on the thing that God told you to do, but because your faith is in luck and you think this thing can happen, well, maybe it'll happen by the lottery, and maybe it'll happen by my great uncle dying and leaving me an inheritance, if nobody leaves me inheritance. I have an inheritance in Christ. Oh, y'all better stop. I don't need somebody else. I serve Jehovah Jireh. But you don't talk like that and you don't think like that. If 
you think that crazy faith is lucky. But John 10, 10, he said that Jesus, this is him talking, I came that you might have, everybody shout at me, life. life. And life to the full. What are you saying to me, Pastor Mike? Write this point down. Believing in luck will not produce a faithful life. He said life and life more abundantly, not luck and luck more abundantly. This is not about us hoping, wishing, and slot machining God into a brand new vehicle. Do you know how insulting that is to the king of the universe? And I'm not saying that God won't do those things for you. That cannot be the motivation. Can I teach y'all to mature real quick? I, that can't be the motivation because we put that same energy into a lot of stuff. Some of us call psychic hotlines and tarot card readers. Oh no, this is happening in 2021. Right after you finish worshiping to Maverick City, you call in or putting your trust in a course or an influencer, hoping that they will provide the key that can be found in the presence of God. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with any of that, except if it's the priority in the plan. Living a lucky life is not the way to have a faithful life. And today, I just want to challenge you, if you're in the realm that thinks crazy faith is lucky, you don't think that God is consistent at this? When Steph Curry comes over half court and chunks the ball up and it goes in, it's happened so many times that if you think that it's luck, you not paying attention. You may not be able to do it, but he has intentionally done that over and over and over again. So what looks abnormal for others, I'm about to preach, is normal for me. See, God doesn't want you to live a life where it's abnormal that he blesses you. And it's abnormal that he heals you. And it's abnormal that when you speak, things start to move. And it's abnormal that your family walks in victory. This ain't lucky. This is my life. Uh oh. <laughs> this ain't lucky. This is my life. Luck may be where you thinking God moves, but I promise you there's another level to crazy faith. When we give, we're not hoping, oh, God, I just, oh, that's not, the God we serve is consistent. This may be our first time practicing this shot. <laughs> This may be our first time shooting from this long of a range. This may be, but he is consistent. So you don't have to hang your crazy faith on lucky. Okay. But there are other people. It was usually all the people at the beginning when I said, some of y'all base y'all faith on luck. And y'all was like, ooh, this next one is for you. See, a lot of people, especially religious people, they believe that crazy faith is just language. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. Are you really? They, they think it's language. So they don't put all their time, energy, and effort into luck. They just want to say the right things. I'm the head and not the tail of brother and brother. I'm blessed coming in. And I'm blessed. I've been in the law for 62 years. And I'm blessed to go in and blessed coming out. You're still on welfare. If I 
five decades? So some, some, somewhere along the way, it just became language. Somewhere along the way, I'll bless the Lord at all times, except when I'm pissed, when I'm frustrated, when I'm horny, when I don't want to do. And so we camp our whole lives behind the language of the Lord. But you got language and no result. We have no evidence that the language and your life match up. And today, this may be the lane you're in. Your crazy faith is hinged on language. So your crazy faith card is beautiful. The la- it's eloquent. It's, it's so punctuated and, and so deliberate and so intentional. Because he's intentional. Everything for you. You got a song for everything. Because it's just about language. I got to love my brother and sister. You ain't invited nobody over in six years. The language. Oh, I'm going to lead a small group. Just be in one. Uh Uh-oh. I'm in somebody's business right now. I'm just saying that this is not the lane that crazy faith flourishes in. A life of just language and no results never produces the faith that somebody else needs to see. This is what I call empty words. If you didn't see last week's message on faith talk, Go back and watch that. But Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. We need unity in this country, but you sow seeds of division. What you watching on Facebook ain't lifting nobody up. It's these Democrats. It's these Republicans. It's the left. It's the right. It's shut up. And actually live out the language you talk about. Okay, uh, they're going to be mad at me today. But I just think if we're going to mature, we honestly have to evaluate. Some of us are not in the lane of crazy faith that actually lives a life of this. We just talk about it. And that's why Matthew 12, 35 says, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. Another translation says the good in his heart. And an evil man brings up the evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. But I tell you, I'm going to tell you this because you need to know that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have ever spoken. So every blessed and highly favored that actually doesn't look like your life is number one, I'm gonna tell you something, a lie. God would rather you be transparent about where you are than talk churchy language. Cause when you don't identify the problem, it can never get healed. Uh Uh-oh. If you go to the doctor and you say my ankle hurts when it really is your arm, he will continue to treat the ankle When the pain is at the arm, when somebody asks you, how are you doing? And you say, today wasn't the best day for me. I'm feeling a little depressed. The cloud is over my head, but I'm trying to keep moving forward. That is language that faith can step into. Oh my God. But you lying and say, John, yeah, 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 yeah. You just finished crying on the phone to somebody else, but you came into this place and gonna fake it for everybody. Listen to me. God does not bless who you pretend to be. He blesses who you really are. And God is saying, if I could just get my church to divorce their crazy faith from empty language. Don't build your crazy faith on luck. I'm better than that. I'm more consistent than that. 
but don't base it on empty language. Because I'm going to ask you what you meant by that. Like everybody, he's going to literally call you to the stand. Back on December 6th, you made a comment that the church just want my money. I ain't giving it no big crazy faith offering. As you threw trash on the parking lot, headed out of the... I just put on some extra stuff because y'all wild, wild, wild. One day God's going to say, what do you mean by that? I need you to give an account for those idle words. Oh, this means everything you say walking away from your husband or wife? You know you ain't got the courage to say it to him. <laughs> but you said it as you walked away. You better be glad I'm staying with you. I should have left you a long time ago. Not knowing that that person is the favor that's on your life. Had you not been with them, you don't even want to know that story. It might not be good right now. But it could be way worse. And God's going to say, what you mean by that? All I'm trying to say is what my dad used to say to me and my four brothers in the van as we was clowning the crap out of each other. He would say, Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. What are you building up? What are you lifting up? Who, who, who are you making better? That it may minister. Your words are ministers. You don't need somebody to pray for you. You could talk to somebody in their ears and they get healed. My lowest moments came where somebody who knew me or didn't just started ministering encouragement to me. And he said, your words are the ministers of what? Grace. Your words should be ministers of grace unto the hearers. I'm not trying to do faith talk part two. All I'm just telling you is that if your faith, especially old crusty Christians, I have to say it because some people, they mean well, but they're mean. And your words don't match up with what you're saying and your life doesn't. And that's why I want you to write this point. I could say a lot, but leverage your language to express love. If you're going to do anything, leverage the words that come out of your mouth, Grayson, to express love. Why, Pastor Mike? What that got to do with having crazy faith? Mm. The Bible tells us very clearly in his word. In Galatians 5, 6. But faith worketh by love. Oh, shoot. Could the reason why some of our crazy faith is not working? It's because we put the wrong fuel in our belief. We thought works would produce. Because don't it say faith without works? You miss the, the heart of it. Faith in something without the corresponding actions. Without the obedience. Without the love that goes along with it, yes. it's dead. Yes. And some of us need to leverage our words to love people. And some of us have been stuck in this lane too long. And I, I pray by the end of this service that you get into another lane. But, but see, there's another lane. Uh-huh. Because some people, and I'm proud of people who made it to this, this next level. But most people get comfortable here. Okay. Some people think crazy faith has to be led. Like, like if I do crazy faith things, Pastor Mike got to lead me there. I need, I need my small group leader. If my husband, he the head of the household. Every move in faith we've ever ma made, somebody led us there. And I'm proud of everybody that gets here because that means you are obedient enough to follow. The act of faith that we're about to do today, I have led you 
to a place of giving in crazy faith. Now, you got to do it. But you were led here. But see, when you're led, it becomes event-driven faith. Crazy faith season. I'll do outreach on the day everybody does outreach. And your whole life is supposed to be an outreach. And, uh, the church has become so compartmentalized to doing it when the group does. I didn't have a group of people believing with me for the Spirit Bank Event Center. I wasn't led to write that down in crazy faith by a leader. That was God speaking to me. That means you may have to fast when nobody else ain't on no fast. That means you may be giving when there is no offering time. I'm trying to build your crazy faith on something that will last. If you have to be led to everything you do in faith, you will miss so many opportunities to obey God. Stop waiting on a committee to give you permission to do what God told you to do in private. Stop waiting. If I would have waited... Oh, my goodness. On people to see what God was saying to me, I would still be at the starting line. And all I'm saying is it's okay to be led. But it's not okay to only be led by man. You have to be led by God. That's why we didn't say no amount people need to give. Because please don't give what I tell you to give. Yeah. I can't do nothing for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's obedience yeah. that produces a fruitful life. Yeah. That's why I go back to a series we did a long time ago, and I just feel like I got to say this to mature our church. Who's the minister? Yeah. If many people look at this room right now, And somebody asks, who's the minister? You point at me, but the Bible is very clear. I'm not the minister here. Ephesians 4.11, just for all the people, because this is the lane you're in right now. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and the teachers. And I'm so grateful that in this house, we have all fivefold um, working together. I see prophets sitting on the front row right now. There's people that are around. I'm telling you, this is, this is part of the reason why our church is going to be effective in this generation. Okay? But it says their responsibility is not to make a calendar for you to do Christ things. Their responsibility is not to create serving opportunities for you. I would serve more if the church would call me back. I'm just saying what has to be said. Their responsibility is to equip. Somebody say equip. The reason I've taught about giving, the reason that I'm teaching you about faith, all I'm trying to do is give you the weapons. All I'm trying to give you is the tools. I'm trying to equip you to do his work and to build up the church. That's what we're going to do today and the entire body of Christ. Now, I know anybody that's in these two categories, they're like, well, let's just talk about it. Let's just use our language. We're taking the nation. Leap over troops. Leap over wall. What is it? Uh, um, um, Run through troops and leap over walls. You ain't going to run nowhere. And these people are like, well, let's just wait. See what happens. See if God just does it again. And these people are saying, well, I ain't going to do nothing until they say to do it. Want to make sure that it counts. Because the truth is, I don't believe God hears me. I hear that God hears, I think that God hears us. That's the reason why people can come and believe corporately very big and then go home and not have an ounce of that same faith. 
because I gotta, I gotta be led there. And God says, oh man, I gave you authority. Like I gave, everybody say me. me. You have authority to declare a different season. I said it was bamboo season and everybody was like, bamboo season, let's go. But what you don't know is I declare different seasons in my life all the time. I find the scripture that lines up with the word of God and I begin to, this is a season of healing. This is a season of, and I begin to declare over my life what the word of God says I can have and I don't have to be led. Bishop doesn't have to give me permission. T.D. Jakes don't gotta say it. Stephen Furtick don't have to give no type of nod if God tells me, oh my God. But I, but I see that we got to move a lot of people from here to here. And today is your opportunity. I'm leading you to a step of faith in generosity that's going to make your flesh have to bow. And it's going to make your spirit man come alive. Because an expectation comes when you sow sacrificially. But this is the thing I just really want to tell everybody because I'm really trying to get somewhere. You are not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. Stop waiting to be led there. If he told you to do it. If he said, well, God, when you bring the financial backer. No, no, no. You got it backwards. God gives provision where there is. Some of y'all, your name has been in rooms that they're ready to bless you but they haven't seen the plan. And when they call and ask you for it, you don't got it. And you're waiting for somebody to lead you to a place that you should already be prepared for because God spoke to you and gave you vision before he gives you provision. And most of us are waiting for provision to move. And God said, how long do you have to be led into what I'm leading you to? So, so don't put your crazy faith in being lucky. Don't put your crazy faith in just the language. Amen. And don't put your crazy faith on always being led. Amen. I thank God that I'm a good leader in the name of Jesus. Yeah. But what happens if I fall off? Right. Right. I, I won't. Okay. But what happens if God calls me to something else? Well, this is the time of year we usually do crazy faith offering. God been speaking to you every month. Well, I want to save it and do the accumulative thing with everybody else to be a- obedience. It's better than any sacrifice. Whatever you could give, it don't matter if you disobey him. They want to shout and run and jump right now. I'm trying to grow them up, Bree. I'm just trying to make sure that this is not short-lived. Okay? So um, God's not waiting for everybody to get it. He's waiting for you to hear his voice and everybody say obey. obey. Okay. So we've talked about three that, that you may be in right now. These are lanes of your crazy faith. But I'm going to tell you one that is a good place to invest your life, okay? It's a lifestyle of crazy faith. It's not crazy faith because of luck, not crazy faith based on language, not even crazy faith on being led by a man or a woman. I live a lifestyle of crazy. And the goal is to take everything from every other lane. All the time, all the energy, all the work, all my giftings. Oh, that's, oh, this is gonna take a lot because I've been putting my energy and effort in things that won't produce for me. And now I'm gonna put everything in a, you know what, matter of fact, I'm gonna just come and dump it all, all my time, all my talent, all my treasure. I want to live a lifestyle. This is not based on an event, a time of year, a word, a declaration. This is, 
When I show up at my job, I walk in crazy faith. When I get into an argument, crazy faith for some situations would be walking away. Because some of y'all got them hands. And, and, and you ain't used them in a while, but you remember, they, they still work. They, st they still work. You need to see the ratchet people. They still work. Tell, I bet you bet not. They still, what stance? What? But what I'm saying is, when you live a lifestyle of crazy faith, it's not compartmentalized to an event or a moment or a time or a feeling. Today, when I woke up, I had to decide to live in crazy faith. Today, when I give, I'm going to give in crazy faith. Tomorrow, when I look at the account, I'm going to believe in crazy faith. Like, y'all want to be fake, man. I, I ain't got time to be up here faking and acting. Everybody not getting a blessing tomorrow. Remember, like, let's be very true. Like, 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 it's seed. <laughs> oh, y'all remember? So, work. Some of us going to plant a seed today and it ain't going to be bamboo season. It had to go down for three years. That's why we sang wait on the Lord for 28 minutes today. That was prophetic. But the reason why you're okay with that, because this is not momentary. I live a lifestyle of crazy faith. Don't make the only time some of y'all that are in here who drove from all around the country, don't make the only time you drive and sacrifice to do something crazy is when you're giving an offering. Some of you need to take, take a crazy drive to go forgive your father. You passed the person you really needed to forgive to drive to Tulsa to give an offering that God can't even really see. Oh, y'all didn't know that's in the scripture? He tells us, when you come bring your offering, and if you remember, eh, it's not right with my cousin, that coworker, all that stuff. It says, leave the, don't give it. Leave them up. Make it right. Y'all don't want to hear the Bible. I just... I'm trying to mature them, Charles. I don't want it to be temporary. I want us to live a lifestyle of crazy faith. That's why Matthew 6, says, seek first. A lifestyle. A, a, a lifestyle of living like this. If you seek him first in everything, God, is this the right way I respond to this? Is this the right way that I talk to these people? Is this the right way? Seek first the kingdom of God, his response, his, his righteousness, his, his, his regulations, not the world's, not cultures, not what your parents said, his. And all the other things that you really want, they get added because you had a priority. I could stay here all day. Because this is where I honestly, and I have good news, I feel like a majority of our church is either right here or like right here. It's not unusual. To be in. Like you're right here. Now there's a lot of people right here. And the reason that we're going to not dumb down and come back over here and bring you because we want to be an example and, and we're going to wave from over here like, come on. Because I can't help you if we both there. Yeah. I, I can't really bless you. I can, I can throw you something. Uh, I can throw you something if I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we both there with nothing. So I'm going to stay here and I'm going to continue. Ah, you missed that one. No, I'm not going to throw that. Oh, there it is. I'm going to hopefully by my life. I'm going to hopefully, by the way I talk, the way I love, the way I wait on people, the way I display the fruits of the Spirit, the way I forgive, the way that I don't hold it against you, 
when I know you did it on purpose, the way, the way I pray for my enemies. You should see how tight some people are right now. Because the truth of the matter is, God wants you to live a lifestyle of crazy faith. I didn't come with some deep word for you to get uh, excited about. I came with the word to practically show you where you are and ask you, would you like to get in the level and in the lane that God intended for you to be in? So, so, so this level is cool, but it's not the best level. No, no, no. I, I, like, we definitely don't want to live lucky. We don't want to just live in language. We definitely don't want to have to be led everywhere that we're supposed to obey God. And a lifestyle of faith is good. But the greatest level of faith that you can ever have, watch this word, is a legacy of faith. Yeah, yeah. A legacy of faith is different. It looked different. Like a legacy of faith is where it's not even about you no more. Mo I'm going to let you know up front. Most people that get to this great place of God will only live that lifestyle. When they die, it dies. Whatever you created dies with you. Whatever you believed God for dies with you. But that's not how God set it up. He set it up so that we would have a legacy of faith. What I've decided now, Bree, is I no longer live my lifestyle for a lifestyle of faith. I don't want people to be like, oh, he's just a man of great faith. What that mean? Okay, great. Who did that help though? Yeah. Whose life was transformed by that? How, how, how is that going to outlive me? I'm asking our church today to dump every bit of your time, your treasure. I don't know why the diamond encrusted hat, but... Your talents, your free time, your leisure, your travel around the world. You've been to every country and ain't served impoverished people in one of them. It's because the lifestyle of faith that Christians portray is about what you can gather, what you can gain, and what you get. This is why the prosperity gospel has such a bad rap. God has no problem with you having it. The problem is it has you. Because at the moment he tells you to give up that trip to go serve in Haiti. Well, God, I don't, I don't, I don't bless the people. I don't done the things you told me to do. I deserve a vacation. Yeah, you deserve. But I just asked you to obey this one time. I didn't say you wouldn't be able to go on the vacation. I'm just saying to you, put your work. Well, I trained seven years in college to do this profession, and I let you do it for four. That was my grace. But I called you before you were in your mother's womb to do something. Y'all don't want to hear me. I called you, I knew your name. I know your purpose and you're confusing purpose with success. Man saying you're successful don't mean you're in purpose. That's why I don't follow everybody on the gram and on Facebook. Just cause they successful does not mean they're in purpose. They will get in front of God. And he said, what did you do with what I gave you? Your purpose may not be getting paid. Nobody wants to hear this. I was content in pastoring this church at 350 people. I had the same amount of passion. The same. Y'all, I'm not. I would get up here and sweat 
and build sets and play the drums and, and run the sound. I would do everything for 300 people. You two. Who is you? And what tube would you? There was nothing. Instagram, internet. But I was convinced. I was in my purpose. And if you're going to live a lifestyle that honors God when you're gone, we no longer are aiming for a lifestyle of crazy faith. It's too low. I want a legacy of crazy faith. Do you know how you get a legacy? You think about the eternal. And this is stuff we don't talk about in church enough. But eternity is more real to you than your reality. And this is what's going to be messed up about it. Is that when you see how this actually going to all unfold, you going to want to redo. And you're not going to get one. Because our reality affects our eternity because we live in time we don't have a concept of how long eternity is but eternity is eternity <laughs> eternity is for ever eternity like the bible says that eternity is what we should be living our entire life for so my entire lifestyle should be trying to get to a legacy that when I'm no longer here, the investment I made while I was here goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. And you're tired, but forever and ever. That's why we give. That's why we serve. That's why we worship. That's why we forgive. That's why we love. It's because what we do here, yes, sir. Yes, sir. the highest level of faith you can ever have, I'm going to give you the secret right now. Write it down. Future faith. I don't believe in crazy faith for what's going to even happen no more in my lifetime. Then the Bible said, if you seek first the kingdom, and right standing with him. Everything about my life, MJ, he got that. Yes. Like, like y'all, I've leveled up. Like, when God showed me this, he said, Mike, you've been setting the standard too low. You want a lifestyle of faith? And you had the nerve to be prideful because I live a lifestyle of faith. He said, but if you die tomorrow, what will be your legacy? Pastor Mike, why are you talking about all this stuff? In the past eight days, I have lost a lot of people that affected me in different ways. The first person that I lost a, a little over a week ago was a man named David Sears. He's a local pastor here in Tulsa, has a church of less than 300 people. His family, his daughters and his son have been gathered around him. I used to go to that church and my mom would sing, We Declare Your Glory. I told y'all, that's her song. She would sing, We Declare Your Glory, and I would play the drums, and um, his son Andy would play the guitar, and, and this man went home to be with the Lord um, unexpectedly because of com complications with COVID. And when they told me that he passed, for some reason it hit me different. And I don't know if you've ever lost anybody. He's not in my family. He's an older white man. But he impacted me and Natalie. We went on a trip with him to Louisiana, I think it was, to Bethany with Bishop and a couple of your other pastors. And me and Natalie sat in the third row with him in a 15-passenger van, and we started calling him Grandpa Sears. And he was just the friendliest person you would ever meet. And then as soon as I got off platform yesterday, I mean last Sunday, somebody said, Virgil Abloh just passed away. He had cancer, and he didn't tell anybody, but he's been fighting for years, 
and he's dead, 41 years old. One of the greatest American fashion designers who went globally in the entire world, impacted everything from sports and athletics to vehicles to art to all this other stuff. 41 years old, two kids and a wife. And then the last person was a man that was a, a pioneer in crazy faith in the Christian television space. His name was Pastor Marcus Lamb, Daystar TV, dealing with COVID. An entire empire built, resources, everything. When we were believing God in crazy faith, I went to their show and him and his wife were so Im impacted by our crazy faith story. They sold, when nobody was doing this, they sold $100,000. Some of y'all were around. They sold $100,000 into our church in crazy faith. And I was like, God, why is all of this? He said, Mike, what you're worried about doesn't matter on the backdrop of eternity. You worried about how much money I'm asking you to give today? What is money? Can it save your life? Can it give you another breath? You, you're, you're talking about time serving people? I ask you to go serve that middle school because there's a young man there that will not learn how to read unless somebody goes and invest, and you will get nothing from it. There will be no earthly reward. But there will be an eternal reward. You will have a legacy of faith. And as I was thinking about this in my life, what I decided is, forever, all I'm going to do, this year, next year, whether somebody calls a crazy faith offering or not, I'm going to use everything that I have. I'm going to live in what is called overflow. Well, Pastor Mike, there's not enough. That means other people have something to come and grab. That means God took care of what I needed, but he did. Somebody shot at me overflow and left a legacy for my children's children and your children's children. And there will be things that people will pick up in the city of Tulsa because there was a group of people, I feel like praising, that sowed a seed, sowed their lives. And created a legacy. Who cares what we accumulate if it doesn't produce for somebody else? And I know this doesn't make sense if you're still living in these. I just thought I would explain it to you so that you could be able to understand why me and Natalie are putting things on hold that we like, on, like in life, to obey God and so in this offering. I want to live this for real in front of y'all. When I went to the bank teller yesterday, I sat in the, the, the uh, I don't forgot what it is, the parking lot. I know when you start doing crazy stuff, it start taking your memory away. Like, what was I? I, went, I, I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> I sat in the parking lot for a cool 20 minutes dealing with me. Do you know what you could do? Well, what you about to just give away? Because the enemy will make you think that you need whatever is in this bucket, this bucket, this bucket, and this bucket. And I was just... And God said, I promise you, you might not see it, but it will be accounted to you 
as faith. I said, account it to me as faith. And I looked in the Bible and then I went to Hebrews and I saw this hall of faith. And it, and it started saying stuff by faith. Abraham, by faith. I mean, it's it just Moses and Noah and Isaac. And he said, I keep records better than anybody else. He said, and by faith. Enoch and by faith and he said and guess what who else's name gets added to that list after you obey me and by faith Michael and by faith Natalie and by faith say your name and by faith and by faith obeyed God and didn't just live a lifestyle of faith a legacy of faith the world would try to tell you that building a legacy of faith is trash. I pick trash cans on purpose. Because we'll think that, oh, that's trash. You give to that church every year? You, oh. Do you know what Bitcoin is doing right now? Do you understand about NFTs? And, and I'm not saying nothing's wrong with it. It just can't save me. Nothing's wrong with it. I hope y'all get blessed off of NFTs and Bitcoin and everything else. But will you have it? Or will it have you? If God tells you to take the rental property and sell it to help the nonprofit. At the end of the day, God's going to look at everything we did and call it trash. That was trash. That was trash. This is what's going to happen when we stand before him. Yeah, you put all of that into... That was hidden in there. Oh, that's the stuff you was keeping from me? Those were the gifts and the talents and the ideas? You didn't put that... In, you died with all of that in you? When you lived, we didn't even know that this was there. You were a songwriter? You could have preached the word. You let your insecurities and what other people thought about you keep you from giving a leg. We don't even know you for what you were created for. How in the world did you live your whole life and we never saw a glimpse of your God genius? Trash trash the only thing that will remain is the legacy you created in faith y'all heard the story of Notre Dame y'all saw how quiet it got it's like geography and 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 history and freck and like, <laughs> I'll tell you <laughs> everybody just like I was wanting spiritual things today pastor um, in, I think it was 2019, the world stopped because um, in Paris, I believe, Notre Dame began to burn. Y'all remember this? And um, what, what ended up happening was it burned like so much, like people were devastated. People were crying. People like the people who were there was like, yo, it's just a building. Like call the insurance people. You know what I'm saying? And just... <laughs> Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Put it back up. But what people didn't understand is how long it took to build this cathedral. In 1163, it was commissioned under King Louis VII. It did not get finished until 1345 under King Philip. How many years was that? If I carry the six minus the two. <laughs> 7, 17, 35, A plus B. Okay. <laughs> you should have seen how people thought God was spiritually going to put the number in your head. 182 years. From the time they started to the time it finished, it took 182 years. 11 kings sat on the throne 
while this building was being constructed. And now it's burning up. They weren't crying because they lost the building. They were crying because somebody's legacy was being destroyed. What do you mean somebody's legacy? There were artisans and men and painters and craftsmen that started a project knowing they would not see the finish in their lifetime. Imagine getting up every day and knowing that what you are putting your life into will never be able to be fully enjoyed by you. But what they were building their hope and their faith on is that one day that their great, 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 great grandchildren would be able to admire the legacy that they put their entire life into. In our microwave generation, in our if the internet ain't, <laughs> we will leave places. We will not get coffee from places that we like. If the inner, like, if the relationship doesn't pan out, they got 30 days. Turn it around. I'm too good looking for this. You might be. But nothing that's worth having comes quickly. What if the church decided, what, not all the churches, what if this church, what if we decided that we're going to live in crazy faith, not for us? I'm going to just put it out there. What if nothing on our crazy faith card happened for us? No, no, no. I'm not saying that God's not. Some people just. <laughs> Why in the hell, me, Lord, did I? <laughs> I heard him talk about the language, so I'm just trying to. Why did I fly up here? Why did I give that? Maybe. Because God wanted to give you an opportunity to be a part of something that's way bigger than you. And he's so good that he blesses us by the way. Mm. What if you weren't the main deal, but you get blessed by the way? As I've, it's been three years of me living over here. This is my new place. Everything on my crazy faith card is about my family. I, no, 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 no. Listen to me. It's not because I don't want or need nothing. It's because God has blessed me so much that if you want to, you can. If you don't, that's cool too. My mind is made up. All my gifts, all my talents, all my resources will be building a legacy of faith. So today, when I sow this seed, I'm sowing for MJ's kids. I'm sowing, no, no, no. See, I'm sowing for my wife's healing. I'm sowing, I'm sowing for my daughter's marriages. I'm sowing, I want stuff I may not be able to speak into because I might not be here. I'm not prophesying anything. I just want to, I want to tell you the reality of this is that nothing is promised to us. I've lived an amazing, I've lived two years longer than Jesus. See, we don't think like that. I'm What will I have left? Some cars? A few houses? Think about it. What are you leaving? I want 
that my great, great, great grandkids to stand in buildings that I had the faith to sow into before they were even a thought. I want there to be answers to problems discovered out of resources that God gave to me to use, to fund stuff that I won't even get to participate in. I want, I'm seeing it before I see it. I want God to use every bit of resource I have, that's time, talent, and treasure, to bring people to a loving understanding of who Jesus Christ is. When I get to heaven, I don't want them to play all the clothes. I, I don't want them to do a reel of all the clothes I wore. When I get to heaven, I don't want them to play a montage of all the times I turned up. When I get to heaven, I want to be greeted by all the people that I helped get to heaven because I lived my life in crazy faith for a legacy. I know we're about to soul pastor. I wanted to be hype. I want you to be helped. Bring me that rope of my life, please. This is it. We're going home. Thank you, bro. This represents eternity. All of this. And yep, eternity goes on and on, like literally ee, on and on. This represents your life. This is your 90 years. Eternity. Your 90. If we get there. And we're so worried about what I did here and who loves me here. And at one time we did that there. And God was like, hey, how you live this, who you love here, yes. how you spend this determines how you will spend all it is. And the crazy thing about it is this, everything, if we really, I'm trying to give you a picture of what heaven is going to be like. It's going to be your reward for how you lived this. There's, people don't like to, okay. In heaven, there's levels. I know nobody talks about it because everybody's like, well, I'm just trying to get in. Okay, cool. <laughs> be in the nosebleed section in heaven. That's fine. You made it. There's responsibilities. It, everybody thinks it's in the clouds. The Bible says there will be a new heaven and a new earth. This is, it's different. Then like the little meme where y'all seen the meme where the dude's giving gun advice and then people die and then they go to heaven and like, dang, what's going on? Like, it's not like that. It's a lot like this with no sickness, no pain, no division. We all got mansions, <laughs> streets paved with gold, all the different things. The Bible's very clear about this. This is not lucky fantasy talk. Your ability to live in the afterlife is determined by what you do right here. Why is the vision of this church representing God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ? Because if I can get somebody to believe in Jesus right here, it'll change all of this. Today when we give, we're not giving out of worry. We're not giving out of compulsion. You've had nine weeks to know about this, 10 weeks, something. 12 weeks, huh? She said, it's 12, I know, okay. <laughs> we're not giving. How we're giving is we're giving as worship. Somebody say worship. Worship, worship means expressing our love or our life to God through not just the song, 
but how we live. And how you live in this has become more important to me, Abby, than anything else. What I do today changes this for people. Oh, you didn't know being a part of Transformation Church changes the red for people. When you give here, not everywhere, but when you give here, how many people been saved this year? 44,000 people. Y'all can act fake if you want to, but what we celebrate right here is the blood of Jesus. That's why it's red. That was poured out for humanity. And because somebody told them their eternity gets changed. 44,000. That's my legacy. That's your legacy. If they take us out of here tomorrow, Amberly, at least 44,000 people will be at the gates of heaven. I feel this thing. Oh, y'all better hear me. The clouds of witnesses will be able to say, when you gave that $10, it helped change the red for me. When I think about Pastor Sears and Virgil Abloh and Marcus Lamb, this statement comes to mind. Your life will be defined not by what you gain, by but by what you give away. The only reason that we're talking about these people is not because of what they had. It's what they gave us. They gave us art. They gave us words of encouragement. They gave us beautiful television, Christian television. They get, you will be defined not by what you had. You remember when he had da, 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 and the house was and the, oh, and they took trip. Nobody's going to, at your funeral, nobody's going to talk about the trips you took. When we gather, nobody's going to talk about how many cars you had on them things and nobody's going to talk about how many bathrooms that your house had. And how, they're not going to talk. They're going to talk about what you gave away. They gave me words of encouragement every time I saw them. They gave me joy every time I saw them. They would help me every time I came to that small group, every time I came in contact with them. I don't know them much. I'm not a religious person, but when, when they worked with me, yeah, yeah, yeah. there was just something about them that gave me hope for tomorrow. How you live right here affects how other people live for eternity. A lot of people think this church is about glitz and glam and this and that. You missed it. It's all smoke and mirrors for this. Today as we give, my heart is saying, God, here's my worship. I don't know how everything else is going to work out after this, but I'm not going to live my life lazy, <laughs> thinking it's about luck, thinking it's about just the language I say, thinking it's about even, even being led there or, or everybody else. I'm going to live a lifestyle that turns into a legacy of faith. And today I'm declaring, here's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. God, we're here. We're just going to obey you in the red. Here's my word. It's a little uncomfortable, God. No, it's a lot uncomfortable. But today we're saying, receive my worship. All of my word. See, faith for the future changes other people. Charles, do you know that it's crazy that we're back here at our original location when we're giving our crazy faith offer. Because there were a bunch of people who many of them aren't alive anymore. That they sold in what we're sitting in right now. For any message you've ever seen on YouTube, there was a group of people who sold. Mama Georgia is one of them. I see you, Mama Georgia. They sold in faith 
for the future. They didn't know if I was going to work out as a pastor. They didn't know if the church would still be here. But Bishop and Pastor Debbie had faith for the future. They built something that they won't even get to see the full end of. Bishop tells me all the time, I can't wait to be able to see what God does with this place. And he's not saying like in his lifetime, Bishop probably got another 50 years left on him. I'm prophesying that. He gonna live to 128. He gonna have that Moses. No, just, if you want to, Bishop, if you want to. Lazarus, come for, I'm a, no, I'm just. But no matter how long he lives, his prayer is that him and Pastor Debbie's faith outlast him. That his faith for the future created a legacy of faith. And my prayer is that my faith creates a legacy for Romello. It, it, it creates a legacy for your children. So today as we give, let's posture our hearts and say, Here's my worship. Come on, all over the world, say, all of my word. It don't really matter in the scope of eternity. I just want to do what you want me to do, God. Let me be so focused on eternity that it makes me live right in reality. Uh, let me see eternity helps me live in reality and I will not be silent I will this is a holy moment God's speaking to some of you right now you weren't even going to do nothing but God's saying come on create a legacy with me as long as I'm breathing in the red, God, you can have whatever you want. The resources, my life, my treasure, my talent. Somebody is getting crazy faith and declaring, and I will. I feel the presence of God. I'm going to live for a legacy of faith. say here's my worship. come on lift it up all of my you can have all of this my whole life God here's my I feel the presence of God stirring people right now the last thing God told me to tell you is temporary sacrifice produces eternal significance. What we sacrifice in the red produces eternal significance. God says, I remember when you did the little bit you had to obey me. How do we know this? There was a woman in the Bible who as everybody was bringing these big baller offerings and making it rain in the temple, all she had was two mites. But when she gave sacrificially in this little time she was here, Jesus called the disciples over and said, did y'all see that? I was like, what? She poured everything she had, and now I'm going to make sure she has a legacy. He said, everywhere in the world, I will make sure this woman's faith is spoken of. And y'all thought it was about amounts. He said, no, 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 no. It was about her. Everybody say obedience. Obedience creates a legacy of faith.
We're about to give. Some of y'all have already given. And all I did today was reinforce what you already did. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of our church. Newsflash. We're not living for ourselves. We get blessed by the way. It's going to take a little bit for some of y'all to get. Watch this message back. I get blessed. Everybody say it. By the way. If God can use me in this red. Bree, this is what we're doing it for. Charles, this is why we sacrifice. Abby, this is what God called us to. Amberly, this is what God is saying. He said, you've given me the red. And I'll bless you by the way. But we're going to create a legacy of faith. And we don't need everybody to do it. Oh, Osby, there's thousands of people watching. Statistics tell me only a percentage of them are going to do everything, anything we ask them to do. Now, many of them on Black Friday were killing people for a toaster and an air fryer. Let me stop. But that doesn't affect anything here. But today, I hope you're maturing. Your obedience today will mature you. I promise you, I'm never going to preach what just feels good. I'm going to preach what grows you. Today, I decided that our family would have a legacy of faith. So this morning, I came up here last night and I prayed and I grabbed cards for my family. And this morning when they woke up as their father, I wrote their names, everybody in my family down on a crazy faith card. And I left a Sharpie and I said, I need you to write what you believe in God for in crazy faith. And they don't have jobs. So I gave them money. I, and I told them this money could go towards getting new Barbie houses skateboards you could you could use this money any way you wanted to but God gave us a little bit of time in this life and we want to use this to obey him and help others first thing when my daughters got here they came back to the office Charles was in there and Bella said I wrote this by myself eight years old I'm trying to lead her a legacy of faith parents get with your kids I'm getting emotional now because I know that what we're doing today I may never like the people in Notre Dame like I want to see it but I, I might not see what God's going to do through my sacrifice and some of y'all are like I'm too young for that I'm 21 years old I want to see it Maybe it's too great. That's it. That's it. Maybe it's just too big. Yeah. There were other buildings that were finished yeah. in those people's lifetime. Wow. We don't talk about them. Yeah. But maybe what God wants to do through us, somebody say us, yes. is so big yeah. that it's going to take a few generations to do. Yeah. What if yeah. Yeah. the struggling school system that we have in our city what if our church changed it 60 years from now? Yeah. So you missed it. What if we're raising? Yeah. Yeah. So today we're about to give. I think I want to I want to break the script real quick. I want to I want to go out to the area where if you're in Tulsa, you're going to give. I want some of our leaders um, to go, if you have your crazy faith card, um, I want you to get it out, get it digitally, get it in the room. They got them in here. You can write in them. Um, people are coming at two o'clock. Some of y'all have done essays on your crazy faith card, and I love it. Literally, you can come here and write all over the wall. Some of you are gonna watch this on replay, and you're gonna feel inspired by faith to give. I'm telling you, we will be here all week, starting tomorrow, right? All week, we will be here from nine. What time is it? Seven? Set, what? Nine in the morning till seven. You can give right now. Me and my family are about to give. But I'm going to walk out there and I want us to pray. Because what we're praying for is for God to do more with less. 
We're praying for him to affect all of eternity with our future faith. So, so can y'all sing that one more time? Here's my word. Said all of my. We're going to begin to pray. Come on, y'all keep singing that. Yeah, there's people literally laying hands. Come on, and I need everybody in the auditorium stand up. Let's begin to pray. Yeah, I just feel the presence of God right now. Listen, we are praying that God is about to do something unusual, that our faith is about to be ignited in a whole nother way. I need y'all to begin to pray. Some people are right now beginning to sow their seed. Father God, right now there is no distance. I need y'all to pray. I feel this thing. There is no distance in the spirit. And God, I thank you that right now that you are moving on behalf of your children right now. We are maturing to a legacy of faith. Father, whatever you do, Father God, if a hundred dollars comes in, Father God, or a hundred million comes in, Father God, I thank you that everything that you're going to do, Father God, is to build a legacy of faith. I pray, Father God, that you are blessing people. Father God, by the way, Father God, that as we point our attention to others, Father God, I thank you that you would allow us to live and love and learn in crazy faith. Father, we pray for Tanisha Brown. Come on, I need you to pray. We're going to begin to pray for actual situations. Father, we're believing for Tanisha Brown. Father, we're believing that they can purchase a home to host other people, to be able to bless others. We thank you that their business is blessed. We thank you, Father, that their student loans Father God will be paid in full. Thank you for healing for her family in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. Come on, I need y'all to pray. I will, we are standing in proxy. Come on, lift it up, pastors. Let's pray right now in the name of Jesus. We are praying, Father, for Cedric. And we're praying, Father God, that they will be able to get into Berkeley Music College. They want to impact people with their music, Father God, with the gift that you've given you, given them their talents and their treasure. Father, right now, we pray for Amaya that she will pass the bar. Father, we pray. I need y'all to come up. We are believing. We are believing in faith. We're praying, Father God, that people will have the faith that will be able to change, Father God, the community that they live in. Father, pray, ooh, I love this, that the eyes of the understanding of their family would be open. Come on, y'all, come on, church, lift this up. Let's begin to pray right now. I need you in the auditorium to begin to pray right now. At your home, turn that place into an altar. We are believing that as we're giving, we are stepping outside of just this usual, maybe God will do something, but we're stepping into a legacy of faith that we will be able to see things that won't be able to be possible without God. Father, we're praying in the name of Jesus for Anita and we're praying for Martin and we're praying for Pastor Perry and we're praying, Father God, for Carolyn and we're praying for the Forbes family to be able to bless people and do what only you've called them to do, Father. We declare, Father God, that you're blessing Baltimore, Maryland and you're blessing Broken Arrow and you're blessing Chicago, Illinois through Justin Williams. Father, God as we give this is our worship this is our worship to you Father God it's not just resources it's our life it's not just our life it's our legacy God today we surrender we yield Father we bow we make an altar Father God we trust you bring me some more of those cards please God I thank you that you would be the one to move the focus off of just us but move the focus onto future generations the focus father god on to more more than what we can see more than what we have right now more than what we can do right now father god god i'm asking you right now in the name of jesus bring me more i thank you father god that you would give jl mitchell father god healing and deliverance for her family I pray against alcoholism. Yeah, I need y'all to begin to believe right now. Father, we thank you. Come on, we're praying in crazy faith. We're believing that God is doing miracles. God, we thank you that as we sow, 
We have named, Father God, situations that we are believing that you will intervene on, Father God. We pray for Victoria, Father God, that the, her mother will be able to be delivered. Oh, God, I'm seeing the cries and the requests of the people of God. And God, we're asking, use us. Use our faith. Use our surrogate faith. Use the faith, Father God, that is what we have. And I thank you that you will create so much more. So much more, God. Come on, y'all. Let's begin to cry out. God, do so much more. Do so much more in our little life, Father God. Make it meaningful. Make the legacy outlast us. God, we pray. I lay hands. Bring me as many cards. We pray in the name of Jesus. We are speaking over Jessica. And we're speaking. Come on, call your name out. Put your name in the chat. Put your crazy faith card. We just getting started. All week we're praying over these. All week we're giving. All week we're believing God to do more. We pray over Faith Jefferson. I love that name. I thank you that every addiction will be able to fall off. I thank you that she'll be able to complete her nursing degree. Thank you that her parents will be set free. Thank you for family. Thank you for our legacy. Father, we pray that our children's 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 children will be able to see our faith on display. God, I thank you that you will bless us by the way as we focus. Here's our worship, God. God, receive everything that we're about to say and do. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Listen to me. This is not a normal service. This is not a normal situation. What we are committing to over this next seven days and through the end of the year, as God speaks to you to sow in crazy faith, I want you to sow for a legacy of faith. This is not event-based. This is not a season. This is our lifestyle that's going to turn into a legacy. Oh, I felt that. This is a, somebody say, this is a lifestyle that's going to turn into a legacy. People will know your faith because of what you do in the moments where it seems like it doesn't matter. God is going to give you dreams and visions and ideas. Some of you, God speaking you, to you right now, he said you did what was comfortable, but I'm telling you to do what's going to create a, a legacy. You need to obey God. Whether it's from your business, whether it's from your savings, whether it's from, I'm telling you, when I pulled yesterday, I pulled from wherever I could to obey God. But what I'm doing is creating a legacy of faith. And I'm going to lead this church. I know a lot of leaders and pastors stay away from this because they don't want to be seen wrong. This is not about the church. This is about you. And I am leading us in this charge to believe God. This will I'm, I sense this mom this is going to be the most significant life altering seed that will be sown from this church the ideas that God is going to give the spirit of prophecy is on me right now the, the spirit is saying to me he said this is a seed that is going to unlock answers and I don't know what that means, but there are answers that we've been needing in certain areas. And as we sow, because some of these things, God's going to give you the answer to them. I, I see it right now. This seed, as we sow this week, is going to unlock answers. And it's going to create a legacy of faith. Today, God, we're going to do what you say. We will listen and obey. Come on, say that. I will listen and obey. Come on, just one more time in faith. I will listen and obey. If you feel any compulsion, if you feel any manipulation, pray until you feel that God has said something to you. For the rest of us, today we are stepping out in crazy faith. We are anchored on a legacy of faith. Today I stand for great, 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 great grandchildren that I'll never meet, but they will meet me through my faith. 
they're going to meet me through me and Natalie's faith. And I think there's another world, a, 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 another, a, another century, another decade that is going to be blessed because of the crazy faith of a group of people that identify as Transformation Church and Transformation Nation. Yeah. Everybody doesn't have to understand it, but we have to be obedient. They'll get it later, but today we give it. Father, I pray against the spirit of fear. Yep. And I pray against the spirit of grieving. It is a joy to partner with you. Here's our worship. Just sing that one more time. Here's my worship and all of all of my worship. My worship. Just one more time, sing that one more time. Sing the next part. And I will die. I feel the presence of God. it up. Say of faith and the lanes of faith there was one we left off there are people who don't base their faith off of luck and, and language and all that other stuff there are people who are just lost like before we get to any they don't believe in anything they're just lost and I just feel like there's been people that have been a part of this service and something in you has been stirring but you've been lost you don't know what to believe You've been lied to, you've been hurt, you've been damaged. And today I wanna to give you an opportunity. We're gonna give, we've already given, we're gonna be giving for the rest of this week. But God's saying today is the day that you can change your eternity by what you do in your reality. And today I wanna to offer you the greatest gift that I've ever received. It's the gift of salvation. It changed me from a 
bad person, somebody who was addicted to pornography, a manipulator, somebody who lied like fluently, all those different things. It was who I was. But when Christ came in and really got my heart, see, a lot of people will say that you need to change your habits first and then come to God. And he said, no, 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 no. If you give me your heart, I'll help you change your habits. He'll help you do the things that's hard. And I'm telling you that a relationship with Jesus Christ will change everything. It'll start your legacy of faith. So if you're watching this live or on rebroadcast, or you just happen to be in the room because some other people is watching it and you ain't trying to fool with it, you're trying to watch the game, whatever the case is, today is the day of salvation. God literally has orchestrated, I need Transformation Nation to begin to pray. Eternity is in the balance right now. I'm telling you, there are people that God has been chasing after you with his love. And he's saying, here, I, I, I want to give you so much, but you've got to give me your life. On the count of three, if that's you and you want me to pray with you that you receive salvation today, I just want you to slip your hand in the air. I don't care who's around you. I don't care when you're watching this. You could be at your office. You could be on the track. You could be in the kitchen. You could be in the living room. It don't matter. I just want you to say, I, I believe I, I'm, I'm doing that. One, you're making the greatest decision you've ever made. Two, Literally, I'm proud of you and everybody in this room is proud of you. But more than that, your name is going to be written in the Lamb's book of life. Your eternity is changed forever. Three, shoot your hand up in the air. Ooh. There are people all over this world. I, can, I can't see you, but heaven is turning up right now. We're going to pray this prayer together. Everybody say, Lord Jesus, thank you for thinking about me in eternity. Thank you for sending Jesus just for me. Today, I repent of my sins and I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Change me, renew me, transform me. I believe you lived and you died just for me. So today, I'm yours. In Jesus name, amen. Oh, can we celebrate all over the world? Come on, y'all. There are people whose names have been changed. Hallelujah. Oh, hold on. That means everybody who's ever given a dollar to what we do at Transformation Church. The transformation that just happened in somebody else's life. It's a credit. Oh, you have a legacy. You have a legacy that is transforming other people's lives. And as we give today, it doesn't just change our lives, it changes others' lives. If you just gave your life to Christ, I want you to text the number on the screen right now. And I want you to let us know, number one, you will be added in with 44,000 other people who have made that decision this year. Okay, that's huge. Y'all, the year ain't even over yet. We got, we got three more weeks, huh? Three more weeks? What can, can we get to 50,000 before the end? Of, can we see God do, oh, y'all playing. Can we see God do a crazy faith miracle? If it's for eternity, why don't we set the goal on something that actually matters? We're depopulating hell and populating heaven. The goal is to rob hell. I ain't just deep I'm robbing hell. As we do this together, y'all, we are creating transformation in Christ. I want to let you know eyes haven't seen and ears have not heard. The wonderful things that God has planned for all of us as we make these mature moves in crazy faith. Today, Father, as these people saw, I thank you, Father, that you will answer prayers that nobody else knows. Mature us, make us, mold us, and let us live a life of a legacy in faith. We honor you, we bless you, and we trust you in crazier faith. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, we agree, we expect, amen. Let's give God one more shout of praise. Until next time, go out and live a transformed life. I love you.